Today, we're going to be covering topic one of GCSE chemistry. I have summarised everything from the book down into just a few pages that you can watch along and make notes on to save you a lot of time when it comes to revision. As always, I highly recommend pausing the video when you want, making brief notes and making sure you understand everything that I talk about. If you have any questions that you want me to answer, let me know down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Starting off, we have the relative mass and charge of protons, neutrons and electrons. This table I would highly recommend you remember. Protons are positive in charge with the plus one, neutrons are neutral and then the electrons are negatively charged with a very small mass. It's very close to zero, often we would just say that the mass is negligible, so basically nothing. In the top right you can see what a standard element looks like on the periodic table. The top number is the mass number, and the bottom number is the atomic number. And as you can see at the bottom of the page, the atomic number represents the number of protons, and the mass number represents the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So by using those numbers you can often work out the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an element. In the middle of the page you can see that the number of protons is often equal to the number of electrons if it is a whole atom. There are some rules that we will find out later on in the video where this slightly changes depending on ions and isotopes and other things like that. Elements consist of atoms with the same atomic number. All that means is oxygen is full of oxygen atoms or oxygen molecules. Gases often travel in pairs which is why it's O2 and N2 for nitrogen and as you can see aluminium in a solid form has that rigid structure and there is just lots of the aluminium atoms within it. Isotopes and ions, very very important definitions. An isotope has the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. An ion has the same number of protons but different electrons. It's always important that you talk about having the same number of protons and then the different of either the neutrons or the electrons for these. Compounds and mixtures, again very important thing that you know the difference between. A compound is when two or more substances are chemically bonded together or chemically joined. A mixture is the same thing but they're not chemically joined. I like to think of something like squash, so when you have squash and water that's just a mixture because you're just pouring two things together. Whereas compound is something more like a water molecule, where there is a physical bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms. We have a little balancing equations exercise here. So as you can see we have the equation N2 plus H2 makes NH3 or ammonia for those of you that know that. I like to set it up like this, so we split it down the middle where the arrow is and we just write out as a little drawing everything we have separately. So starting off with the nitrogens, you can see we have two on the left hand side but only one on the right hand side. So we're going to have to put a big two in front of the NH3 which in turn is going to double the number of nitrogens but because the H3s are also being doubled, we're going to have to double all of those as well. So now we have six hydrogens on the right hand side. The nitrogens are balanced, so we're happy with that. The hydrogens have two on the left hand side and six on the right hand side. So we're going to have to put a big three in front of the H2, which again is going to increase that two to a six. And now it is all balanced. So that is our final equation. There are five or six main separating methods that you need to know about and I've tried to do a nice diagram for each of them with some brief words just to explain them. So evaporation and crystallization, I've kind of blended these into two because they kind of work hand in hand with each other. But we've got an evaporating basin on top of a Bunsen burner and if you slowly heat up the solution it makes the solvent evaporate and then by taking it off the heat the crystals will then form underneath it. Filtration is when we remove an insoluble solid from a liquid. An insoluble solid just means something that doesn't dissolve. So for example that is something like sand. So if you have sand and water together you'd put them in a filter funnel with some filter paper and the water would just slowly seep through and collect in a tube or a bottle at the bottom. Next we have paper chromatography. Some of you may have seen this before. So you use a special piece of chromatography paper you draw a pencil line and you do your ink splodges on that line. Place the water into the beaker so that it goes just underneath that pencil line. Naturally the water will soak up the page and drag the ink out and separate it that way. Simple and fractional distillation are both very similar and they are used to separate mixtures from each other. 
Simple distillation is when you're just trying to separate a liquid from something like salt, so like seawater. Uh, but fractional distillation is where you have a mixture of liquids that you're trying to separate from each other. And you could also have things like salt within that water as well. So take your time and pause the video, make nice diagrams of each of these methods with some little bullet points just to give you little prompts on the side as well. Next, we have the history of the atom. So starting off with the plum pudding model. The plum pudding model was thought to be a spherical ball of positive charge with little negative charges floating about, which we now know as electrons. Ernest Rutherford performed the alpha scattering experiment with the gold leaf. You may have heard of that before. I will go into more depth in that in a physics topic soon because it's explained in a lot more detail on the physics side of things. After that, we have now found about the nuclear model of the atom, which is what we know today. The nuclear model contains a positive nucleus in the centre, and this is where most of the mass is. And then there are electron orbits around that nucleus. The electron structure is 288. So on the inner shell, it's got at most two electrons. And then on all the shells after that, at least at GCSE level, it will be 8, 8, and so on. We also found out that there is a lot of empty space within the atom, unlike the plum pudding model, which we thought was just one solid mass. And finally, we have the different types of elements within the groups that you need to know about. So group one elements, such as lithium, sodium, and potassium, have properties such that they are very reactive. They have one electron in the outer shell because they're group one. They form ionic compounds when they bond together, which means that they just transfer electrons and they are soft to touch. So if you were to cut them, they're very easy to cut through. The group seven elements are known as the halogens, and these are fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, just to name three of them. Again, the properties, they are very reactive. They have seven electrons in the outer shell because they're in group seven, and they are non-metals with a colored vapor. And finally, the group eight elements, or the noble gases, contain elements such as the helium, neon, and argon. The group 8 elements have a full outer shell of electrons, so this means they are inert or unreactive, so they don't react with anything. They are colourless gases, and because they don't react, they are also non-flammable. So again, very important that you understand a bit about each of these three, because they're very commonly asked in exam questions. But apart from that, that is the end of topic 1. The next topic will be bonding, structure and properties of matter, so wait around and I will get that video out as soon as possible. Like and subscribe for more. And as always, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But I hope you enjoyed, found this useful and thank you for watching.